Hi everyone, welcome to My Two Plays Games. My name is My Three, and I'm very passionate about tabletops, and I'm learning to be a better GM, better player, and a better person. I want to share with you some of the cool stuff that I've been learning. Uh, today we're going to talk about player behavior and things that make your GM go, man, that was a great session. Uh, of course, this isn't all of it or, you know, the only thing, but just some things that even if they aren't like completely universal, they're fairly universal, I would say. Um, though, of course, your table is totally unique and like what resonates with people will be unique. So what I'm describing here, there's no like one way to reach that. These are just kind of uh, abstract concepts in a lot of cases. The first one is enthusiasm and engagement. Uh, GMs love it when players are actively engaged and enthusiastic about the game. Uh, this includes, could include, uh, being interested in the lore, uh, participating in the narrative, reacting to plot twists, showing genuine interest in the world and its characters. Enthusiastic players generally contribute fairly positively to the overall atmosphere of the game. You might think this is just roleplay, and uh, honestly, organically, that's kind of what I go to as well, like someone who's really invested in roleplay at the table. But your player who has spent, you know, hours poring over their character's abilities, uh, the rules in the book, like they use uh, mechanics in interesting ways, they are similarly engaged. It's just they're not as maybe theatrical uh, as the person who's doing the intense role play, but they're no less engaged. Uh, in fact, they are probably equally as engaged, just in like another way. Number two, creativity and problem solving. This one is kind of interesting to me uh, because on its face, I don't think you'll find a single GM who will be like, no, I don't like it when my players get creative. But then when they do stuff like using hacking or like a mage hand to open the door without activating the uh, weed triggered trap or circumventing that, some GMs kind of bristle because that's not the intended purpose. And... Okay, but I do want to encourage you to maybe start starting with yes on this one. Um, I, that's so wild. I'm gonna, you know what? I that's not how it's supposed to use, but that's super creative. Let's like figure it out. Um, so start with yes. Yeah, let's roll for it. You don't have to just give it to your players. You can make them roll for it and, and, you know, make the attempt. But allow them to make the attempt. Don't bristle and start with no. Find a way to start with yes. Then, you know, get your players to describe it because they obviously have something in mind that may not have crossed your mind. Or if uh, you are the player, ask if you can. Uh, expand on it and describe what it is you're trying to do and why you think it might work. Conceptually, I think GMs appreciate players who think con creatively and contribute to the story by coming up with um, inventive solutions to challenges. This should involve using character abilities in unexpected ways, uh, devising clever strategies, even introducing elements to the narrative to enhance the overall storytelling and gaming experience. If you are the GM in this scenario, don't be afraid to broaden your sense of what this means to you. It's always more fun to do more than less. Number three, game-appropriate character development. Games enjoy players 
really immerse themselves into their characters and into the game world. This involves uh, role-playing, developing character uh, backstories, making in-game decisions based on character motivations and personality, really adding depth to the story and making the game more immersive for everyone. Uh, don't worry about doing voices or anything, uh, though, of course, if you want to, you can. If you think it'd be fun, you know, go for it. Um, I don't do voices, uh, personally, but I like to think that my characters are all distinct enough, uh, without needing to do them. So, this is totally optional and extra, but if you create something in real life, um, related to the campaign, a lot of GMs love when you share that with them. Like, I personally love writing, um, so sometimes I will write a short story about a random thing that happened in the world, um, with my character, and, you know, I'll just share that with my GM. I, I don't expect them to... Uh, do anything with it. I don't expect them to like make it relevant to the story. Certainly, if they choose to, like whatever. That's not the point. The point is my engagement with their world. So I do it in the form of writing. But you know, some people like to draw. So you will maybe draw a scene or make some art, some visual art about um, something that happened in the game, something that happened in the character's backstory in this, or something in this world that your character witnessed. One of my players once drew her tiefling bard making friends with the warlock's bat familiar and feeding it this giant oversized strawberry. And it was just the cutest thing. Like, I still... This happened, like, five years, four or five years ago, and I still hold it so fondly as a part of my like core game memories of like one of the best things that's ever happened. I've also been in a group where one of the players decorated their journal to be like thematic to their character. Like their character was someone who had a uh, spell book. So they decorated the journal that they would take notes in to look kind of uh, thematically similar to what the character's spell book would look like in the game. Like, that was so cool. Uh, someone else made uh, some food, and it was similar to a dish that their PC made of uh, eating growing up or got when they went back home and their mom cooked for them or whatever. It was amazing. Uh, my point is that whatever direction the wind blows you, if you do something in real life that's related to the game, if you share it with your GM, it's really exciting for your GM to see because it means that your player is thinking about the game even when they are not at the table. And we GMs are an ego-driven bunch. <laughs> Number four, and I, I think this is big enough that I'm actually making a separate video about it. Don't make failure a table problem. Some nights your dice just don't work. Like, they just don't cooperate. Uh, some nights your PC might die. All of these things might happen. And it is completely normal and reasonable to be disappointed. But you have to laugh it off. You have to accept it gracefully and you have to move on as soon as you can. Don't make it everybody else's problem. When you accept failure as part of the story and the narrative and show that you have some resilience and frankly perspective, your GM trusts you more. They will feel more comfortable doing more part of time with you, being more intense with, with story beats with you because 
clearly you're able to handle it when things don't go the way that you want them to go. If they think you're going to have a majorly negative emotional reaction, and yes, anger and resentment are emotions, regardless of the amazing branding most men have been able to do to label it logic and not emotions, but they are emotions. Uh, When your character is doing anything except being the big damn hero, and you kind of like pout and sulk or be upset or like whatever the hell, you're going to give your GM pause. You're going to give your GM pause and they will probably start drinking the whole table with kid cups because they don't want to set you off. And shit, like, what if the other players feel the same way? You know, uh, best to just let them all win without too much of ass. It's just so much easier. Basically, GMs love players who embrace challenges and setbacks uh, and adversity rather than viewing them as things that stop them. They look at them as obstacles to be surmounted. And that's something that we really value as GMs. Like, we're throwing you into a snake pit so that you can crawl out of the snake pit. Like, you don't get to do the cool thing unless, like, the intense thing happens to you first. Like, and we need to trust that you can handle it. Um, and, and that means not making your failure a damn problem. Gaming involves a certain amount of uncertainty, uh, the possibility of failure. And uh, players who are with the punches, you know, they adapt to unexpected developments, turn setbacks into opportunities. Um, They contribute to a really, a much more positive dynamic and frankly, a more enjoyable game. So if you let failure either be something that you latch on to for the narrative interest of it, or if it's something you let slide off of you, now you are being the mature, chill player that GMs love to have at the table. Anyway, uh, that's all I have. Uh, if you are a player, definitely share some of the cool stuff that you have done that you think really resonates with your GM. Uh, if you're a GM, I'd love to know some of the stuff that your players did that you think of fondly. If you like this video, consider subscribing. Uh, But if you don't like notifications or subscriptions, um, I do have a backlog of stuff and I try to put stuff out weekly. Uh, I do also have an audio-only format. If that works better for folks, I'll link that in the description along with a few different actual plays that I'm on uh, as well. Otherwise, uh, thanks so much for hanging out. Uh, come and see me again soon. Bye.